I have these two PCBs with standard 1.6 mm copper thickness. This one is without the solder and has no solder mask applied to the PCB. This is basically an edge bridge which I designed to control small DC motors. This is the same circuit that I used in the solar tracker project. While this PCB has the solder mask and also the solder is applied to the PCB traces. Now we will be practically testing if PCB tinning really makes any difference. I will also explain how to manually apply solder to PCB traces to increase the current rating of the PCB traces of your choice. This manual method of PCB tinning may be quite tedious if you have hundreds of these PCBs which need to be tinned. Isn't it cool if the PCB manufacturing company like the PCBWay or any other company do it for you? Of course it is cool you get PCBs with solder applied to the power lines. But the question is how you will tell them which PCB traces need to be tinned. You will get answer to this question while designing a PCB and of course I will explain how to apply solder to the PCB traces of your choice using the Gatesoft Eagle schematic and PCB designing software. The PCB board used in this video is sponsored by the PCBA company. If you are planning to order PCB or PCB assembly for your new product or prototype, this is the right moment with PCBWay. You can win amazing prizes, amazing gift cards. You can also win PCBWay discount coupons. You can start by clicking on the first link in the description. Now we will practically test if it's really worth tinning the PCB traces. I'm going to run this motor using these two PCBs and let's see what happens. I started off by placing the components and completed the soldering job. First I will start with this circuit with no solder applied to the traces. Over here I connect the 12 volt power supply for the relays. Both the relays are of the type SPDT, single pole and double throw. This wire will be connected with the Arduino's ground. These two wires will be connected with the Arduino's I.O. pins. I will use pin number 2 and pin number 3 on the Arduino. So using these two wires, we can control the direction of rotation of the DC motor. These two wires are used to connect the external 12 volt power supply for the 12 volt DC gear motor. With these two points, we will connect the DC motor. So let's go ahead and solder the two wires of the DC motor. You can see the Arduino is turned on. The DC gear motor is connected with the relay edge bridge. The 12 volt external power supply is connected which is used to power up the DC motor. I have also connected a potentiometer which I am going to use to control the DC motor. These are just the basic connections. After performing the tests I will share with you the final circuit diagram, PCB board file and Arduino code which you can download from our website electronicclinic.com. Now let's start the testing. 
First, let's check if the whole system really works. Using the potentiometer, we can control the direction of rotation and we can also turn on and turn off the motor. As you can see, nothing is happening to the circuit because right now, there is no load on the motor and it draws around 1 to 1.5 amps. The external power supply I'm using right now can supply current up to approximately 2 amps. It's really hard to stop this motor with bare hands. I'm doing this to put some load so that the motor can draw more current. Next, I started with the plier, but nothing happened to the circuit because the power supply couldn't deliver more current. These motors, when on load, can draw more than 6 amps. To increase the current, I decided to connect it to a 12 volt battery. So I connected two wires from the battery. Now the motor can draw more current. This time you can see it's hard to stop this motor with plier is the battery can deliver enough current and then a few moments later I could see the smoke. This trace is damaged. For small DC motors with current requirement up to 4 amps, this circuit can be used without any problem. I'm using the same exact connections. Let's compare this with the other circuit. During the last test, this trace was damaged, while in this circuit, solder is applied to the power traces, so hopefully this won't damage. First, let's check if this circuit really works. Now to put some load on the motor, I will use the plier. This is really a powerful motor. I kept applying the force. The traces are not even warm. I kept performing the tests. Even the plier was damaged. Temperature on the motor side started to increase but nothing happened to the circuit. So after performing a series of tests, I must say PCB turning really make difference. You can increase the current rating of the PCB traces if you apply a thin layer of solder. You can do it manually, but it needs some practice. Be very careful while applying the solder as too much heat can easily damage the traces. Now I will explain how to apply solder to traces using the Gatesoft Eagle schematic and PCB designing software. While your PCB design is opened, go to the layer settings and turn on the T stop and B stop layers. While the B stop layer is selected, type line and then start trying lines on the traces to which you want to apply the solder. It's just that simple. I made it a double side PCB by adding copper traces on the top side as well. This will further improve the current capacity and also add the solder. Finally, I generated the Gerber files.
I use the PCBA online Gerbo Viewer for checking the Gerbo files and once satisfied I placed an online order on the PCBA official website. These are the PCBs I received from the PCBA company. As you can see the quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the blue solder mask looks amazing. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram if you want to learn how to make the relays based edge bridge circuit. This is the circuit diagram of the relays based edge bridge module. The normally open and normally closed contacts of both the relays are connected with the 12 volt battery positive and ground contacts. Another 12 volt adapter is used to power up the relays. This is the voltage which is used to energize the relay coil. The two relays are controlled using the Arduino pins 2 and 3. A potentiometer is connected with the Arduino analog pin A0 while the other two legs of the potentiometer are connected with the Arduino's 5 volt and ground pins. I have a very detailed article on the relays based edge bridge circuit in which I explain the whole designing with the help of Proteus simulation. I will provide a link in the description if you want to learn in detail. Two relays are connected with the Arduino pins 2 and 3. A potentiometer is connected with the analog pin A0. This is just a basic program. We read the potentiometer and store the value in the variable part underscore data. Then we use some if conditions to turn off the motor and to control the direction of rotation of the DC motor. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.